Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and I thought I'd take the time to talk to you guys about how I have eight tangs in my 210 gallon reef tank. Now, if you've been following my channel, you probably already have a pretty good idea how I got here. But I don't think a lot of you have been following along since the beginning because there have been trials, tribulations, and things always haven't gone to plan. So I kind of thought I would go over how I have eight tanks in my reef tank and some tips and tricks on how you can have multiple tanks too. To start everything off, let's get in the way back machine and go back four years to the 90 gallon. I bought Rankin's my blue tang for the 90 gallon four years ago. And the intention was to have my blue tang and then get a yellow tang. And that would be it for the 90 gallon. And for me, that's probably a pretty good stocking for a 90 gallon tank. And so I eventually bought the yellow tang, filled up the 90 gallon with coral and decided I really needed a bigger tank. So it was time to upgrade to the 210. But as you can see in the 90 gallon, the blue tang and the yellow tang were doing great. Part of the reason I wanted a really big tank was so I could have a tank full of tangs. And as you can see, once I upgraded the 210, the tank was pretty empty. I didn't have many fish, so I wanted more tangs. Now is probably a really good time to talk about some of the tang rules. The first rule is don't put tangs of the same genus together. So don't put a yellow tang and a purple tang together because they're both zebrasoma. Don't put a powder blue and an Achilles together because they're the same genus. Don't put two tangs that look similar together. There's a high likelihood that they're gonna fight. Now, remember, these are tangs. So there is the potential that they're gonna fight no matter what. Everybody has heard the story of the yellow tang killing the Achilles or anything like that. So it is always possible even if you follow the rules, that things could go wrong. Now, there are lots of other things people suggest, like put all your tangs in at once. And this is hard to do if you're going to quarantine. Now, quarantining with tangs is hugely important because tangs are at a high likelihood of getting acre marine velvet, and you don't want that in your tank. So if you want to be successful with tangs, quarantine, just do it. Now, I break one of those rules. I ended up buying a purple tank, and I was smart enough to quarantine this fish. This is a very expensive fish, and I wanted to really do the best I could for it. Now, the problem with this fish is I already have a yellow tang. And remember, purple tangs and yellow tangs are both of the genus Zebrasoma. So I didn't follow the rules. I put a purple tang in with a yellow tang, Everything was fine. Minor aggression, but everything was fine. Everything was fine for almost a year. Then one day, Pinky the Yellow Tang snapped. He decided the Purple Tang was no longer allowed to eat. So I had to tear the entire 210 gallon tank down and pull the Yellow Tang out. This was terrible. I exiled Pinky the Yellow Tang to my frag tank in the basement while I regrouped. I was so mad at this point, I was ready to throw in the towel. This stupid little yellow tang had brought down my tang empire before I had a chance to build it. I wanted a bunch of tangs in that 210, not two. So what was I supposed to do? Well, I was distraught. I almost traded Pinky in. But I couldn't let that little fish win. So there was a little trick I knew about. That trick is, if you want lots of tangs in your tank, get lots of different genuses. Wanting more tangs in my tank, I decided to buy a chevron tang. A chevron tang is a bristle tooth tang in a different genus than the purple tang and the blue tang that are already in the tank. It should be a great tank mate. Now, chevron tangs are some of the prettiest fish out there, especially when they're juveniles. And they are crazy expensive. My mom gave me money for Christmas. I bought this fish. I loved this fish, and I quarantined this fish. This fish had marine velvet. This fish died. Feel free to insert your own expletives here. 
I've just killed a really expensive fish of marine velvet. This video haunts me because if I would have put copper in at the point we're looking at this video, this fish would probably be with me today. Things have just gone from bad to worse. I've killed a really expensive fish and Pinky, my yellow tang, is still downstairs in the basement. At this point, I had to kill the marine velvet in the quarantine tank. So I put an extra big dose of copper in there, let it sit for two weeks, then I took all the water out, let it sit dry for a couple weeks. And then it was time for more fish. So I got a flamingi and a yellow eye coal tang. These fish are different genuses than the purple tang and the blue tang that were already in the tank. And by nature, they're much more docile tanks. Don't let the size of this flamingi fool you. In February, just eight months ago, this fish was the same size as the yellow eye coal tang we just looked at. Next up was a powdered blue tang. Now these guys have a reputation for being a little more aggressive than some of the other tangs, but they are absolutely beautiful and I'd always wanted one. Now this tang I bought at a reduced price because the person I bought it from had been struggling with ick on this fish for a while. They couldn't get rid of it using the alternative methods. I brought it home, treated it with copper, and look at it now. It's a beautiful, healthy fish. At this point, I've kind of rounded out the genuses. And for a lot of you, this is probably a great place to stop. I have a purple tang, a blue tang, a powder blue, a flamingi, and a yellow eye coal tang. So I've got the good genuses covered. I've got five tangs in the tank, but Pinky's still downstairs in the basement. What am I going to do about that? So if you want multiple fish of the same genus, the trick is, is put a bunch of them in all at once. So get like four or five yellow tangs and put them all in at once. Now, I already have a purple tang in there, and I've got four other fish of different genus in there. So there's four fish of a different genus that aren't really going to be a problem. The purple tang that's established is going to be the one that really is going to give me problems. But there's nothing I can do about it. Ideally, I'd pull them out. But in that big tank, that's too hard to do. So I'm going to go buy two more zebra somas and get them ready to go in the tank. I bought a desert dini sailfin and a second purple tang for the tank. I actually purchased both of these fish about the same time. I put the desert dini in QT and I left the second purple tang at the store. If I would have put both of these fish in the QT, it probably would have been a bloodbath. Two good sized tangs in a 29 gallon QT wasn't gonna go well. So when the Desert Dini was done with QT, I put it downstairs in the Anemone Frag tank. And then I put the purple tang into QT. And after it was done with QT, I put the Desertini, the purple tang, and Peaky, the yellow tang, in the 210 gallon tank at night. All the tangs went in and everything was fine. Everything was fine until morning when the lights came on. At this point, the established purple tang did its best to try and kill the purple tang that was in there. I was so worried. I didn't know what to do. But after a couple hours of extreme violence, it just stopped. It stopped and everything's been fine ever since. I dodged a bullet. But it was all worth it because look at my tank today. It looks fantastic. Now, this isn't a process that I would recommend to anybody because you can see how hard it was for me to get to here. But for me, this is the culmination of years of trial, error, heartache, everything. This tank has been so challenging and now is so rewarding. So thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.